Hello and welcome to episode number 319 of the TW2 Way Challenge Run. This is going to be Monday Night Raw, week 4 of December 2022. And it is the final episode of Raw for the year of 2022. <laughs> so, going to be a big show. Um, the only matches we have announced are... Cody Rhodes vs. Carland, <laughs> Rhea Ripley vs. Tatum Paxley, and John Morrison defending his Intercontinental Championship against that one guy that Pivens has been talking about. Um, without any more further ado, though, I say we wrap up this year, hey? <laughs> so let's jump straight into the show. Drew McIntyre opens up the show, fresh off of, you know, saving Christmas, and... <laughs> bro kicking, not bro kicking, Claymore kicking Drew Mac uh, Ludwig out of his window and him falling to the ground in Nakatomi Plaza. <laughs> he comes out of his belt, he's got his title back. He goes, Boy, it feels great to have my title back. You know, last week I invaded and I broke into Ludwig's lair. And you know, the thing is, I consider myself a nice giving Christmas guy and I didn't take any of that, those other possessions because none of them mean anything to me. I just wanted to take what is not Ludwig's and what is mine, and that's this World Heavyweight Championship. And now, I've just found out that my f next defense of the championship will be the first WWE Premium Live Event of 2023 New Year's Revolution. And my opponent, Mr. Ludwig Kaiser. Now, Ludwig, if you really want to bring your A game, you can take this title. You probably can. You probably have that talent. But not against me, because I'm determined to keep a hold of this belt, and I'll kick your head off again. And that's because I'm the goddamn man around here on Raw, and there isn't anybody on Raw that can tell me different. Juice! Juice, please! Out comes Chad Gable. <laughs> and he goes, Shush! Shush, please, shush. Now, Mr. McIntyre, you are... A great world champion, no doubt about it. But here's the thing. You, what you did to Ludwig last week was uncalled for, you know. Barging into his home, taking your title back. You know, Ludwig shows up to work, he would have brought your championship with him. You know. But you went about it in such a reckless way that I've lost all respect I had for you. And that was not a lot to begin with. Andrew goes, well, it's funny you say that, Gable, considering, you know. Last week you were so big and bold about your five minute open challenge, but Seamus came out and he whooped your ass and not only did he beat not only did he survive the five minutes, he looked like he was about to beat you until, you know, you were saved by the bell. Gable goes, Shush! How dare you insinuate such a thing? I, as a master strategist, was just saving some of my energy for my next upcoming bout with Seamus, which will be no time limits. As long as we damn well want to go at New Year's Revolution. Thank you. Now comes Ludwig. I don't know what his theme song would be, so I'm not going to play it. <laughs> and he goes, Mr. Gable is right, Drew. I am simply in the business of collecting. And that championship is my prized possession. See, I was just borrowing it. I would have given it back to you because, you know, I have an honor in this business and stealing a championship and parading around as a fake champion that that doesn't fit my my honor of this th this business i was merely just taking the championship to, to trial give it a trial run see how it would look in my collection before i own it officially after new year's revolution but you like the reckless you know just caveman that you are having to come in and barge it and take it back you could have just asked but now you're here You've got your championship back very well and good, but yeah, I see Gable here. I see myself here. And I say we end 2022 the same way I mean to start 2023, and that's with a beatdown of Drew McIntyre. And then Drew drops the bell and he's like, bring it on. And then a big two-on-one fight breaks out. When Seamus runs out to make the save, he does the beats of the Baldrin on Gable before Ludwig like pulls him away. And him and Drew sort of look at each other. And give a respectful nod, I guess, because, you know, they have teamed up since Clash of the Castle, because they did it at Survivor Series. But, obviously, there's still, there's still a little bit of lingering, you know, fuck you there. 
And then, obviously, it's made main event, the final Raw main event of 2022. Chad Gable and Ludwig Kaiser against Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Then, I imagine, we go to the ads. And we come back, um, Tatum's making her entrance for the match of Rhea. And then we cut to Alexa and Ivy in the back, watching her entrance. And Ivy goes, you know, Alexa? She goes, what? She's like, I know, you know, last week, Tatum and me, like, ignored your orders. You know, why's the reason that she's the one getting punished and not me? I mean, Alex is like, well, Ivy, because I don't blame you for what happened, you know? It was all her. She was the one who concocted this great plan to go behind my back, and she needs to be taught a lesson for that. And Ivy's like, and you think putting her in the ring of Rhea Ripley is going to teach her that lesson? And she goes, yeah, yeah, sure, you know, Rhea knows what she's got to do. Everything that Rhea is going to do is what I've asked her to do. And Ivy goes, okay, well, I'm sure maybe Tatum will learn a lesson. And Alexa goes, yeah, I'm sure she will. And then out comes Rhea for the match. A 78, that's really fucking good actually <laughs> I was a bit like a 70 at best but yeah Rhea wins obviously Riptide 10 minutes you know we kind of gave Tatum a chance to actually hang in there but in the end Rhea does put her down with the Riptide 86 for Rhea 39 for Tatum Rhea was off her game so Rhea this could have even been even better if Rhea was on her game but then after the match Rhea stands tall she stands down she looks down at Tatum down at her feet and she's sort of like pulls her arm away from the referee, goes outside, she clears the announce table, she drags Tatum to the outside, and she like screams at him and goes, this is what you get, this is what you get, and she goes to slam Tatum through the announce table, when Bianca runs out, and makes the save, she like, I imagine, grabs Tatum's leg and pulls her off, as Rhea's got her up in like a military press or whatever, and then she whips Rhea with her braid, and them two brawl around ringside before people have to come out and separate them ahead of their table of ladders and chairs match at New Year's Revolution. <laughs> we then cut to the Titus World Records from, you know, the scene of many, many events last week. I go, you know, last, I thought last week's auditions were going to be awful, but, you know, Snoop Dogg is now, he's now signed to Titus World Records. And Billy's like, well, he can't be that committee because he hasn't even shown up tonight, mate. And Titus like, Billy, you know Snoop's got a, a, a busy schedule. Just the fact that he's in Titus World Records means that our record label is only going to grow from here on out. And for that Gacy guy, you know, I wasn't falling for any of his tricks. You know, he, he's looking around here, looking to scout new people to try and join his woo cult. We won't have him that. Okay? The video goes, well, what's this then? She picks up like a black feather from one of the, I guess, DJ decks. And Titus goes, oh, put that down, Billy. I don't know where that's come from. And it appears that while we may have picked up our most valuable member yet, we've made quite a few enemies last week too. We then cut to the ring with Regal and I imagine the entire Regal Coalition, but I couldn't put them all on there. Ridge and Florence are there, but... And he goes, Ladies and gentlemen, you are cordially invited to what is going to be 2022's greatest group, the Regal Coalition. What a year it's going to be for Gunther, for Dudley, for Pete, for Ridge and for Florence, okay? So last week, I officially announced that this woman right here Florence will be the first confirmed participant in the 2022 Women's Royal Rumble match. And Dudley and Pete, they're going to be in the Men's Royal Rumble match too. But that's not after. They're going to become the Raw Tag Team Champions at New Year's Revolution, taking on those Path of the Dragon dimwits. And as for Gunther, well, it may look like Gunther's been forgotten in all of this, but... Let me tell you, me and him have big plans because it's New Year's Revolution. We get passed by the 
music of Path of the Dragon. And they're just like shouting, because I was getting in the face of Regal. And Zergut is there, Zai is in there, facing off of Florence. And it ends with Pete Don and Tozawa fighting. And then we get a match between Pete Don and Akira Tozawa, because I think this will do really good. And in 86, I was right, clearly. But Tozawa, I guess, is not doing so hot in singles action. That's why the team is still around. But in 1251, Pete Don scores the pinfall victory over um, Tozawa, because as good as Humberto and Tozawa are as a team, as a singles, they're still a little bit, you know, still a little bit of work to do. But Tozawa is put down with a bit of end in 1251. 94 for Pete, 76 for Akira. And apparently there was not a lot of psychology, which hurt the match. Okay, game, whatever. But yes, momentum towards Dudley and Pete heading into New Year's Revolution. We then get an interview with Kathy Kelly. And her guests are the new alliance, I guess, of Liv Morgan and Hikaru Shida. And Kathy goes, well, girls, you know, we saw quite the, ch- the shake-up in the women's tag team ranks. Um, last night at the SmackDown branded High Voltage pay per view, when J Flo lost the titles. Actually, no, we didn't, because it wasn't on the pay per view, Kathy. It was on the Christmas episode of SmackDown. <laughs> and they lost the titles to Bailey and Dakota Kai of Damage Control. And what are your thoughts going forward on the face of the future of this division? And Liv's like, first of all, let me be the first to, well, second, I guess, and third to announce that you're looking at myself and Hikaru Shida, not only the future women's tag team champions, but we're going to take those titles into the Royal Goddamn Rumble, because we're both going to be in that women's Royal Rumble match. Now, as for the future of the women's tag team division, you know, me and Shida are along the way, so we've just came together, and we share the same vision, okay? And it doesn't matter if it's Damage Control, J-Flow, or even the Grand Jury. Whoever the champions are, we next get our shot, we're going to win them. <laughs> and then Charlotte walks in, laughing again. She goes, look at you, it's adorable. Like, you win one fluky Royal Women's Championship two years ago, and you suddenly think you, you've got what it takes to be a champion? No. Okay? You want to know what it takes to be a champion? Look at me. Look at Jordan. Look at Aaliyah and Skylar. You know, the future Women's Tag Team Champions who you conveniently left off because you're clearly scared of them. And Liv goes, Okay, if I want to look at what a champion's like, boo, I wouldn't look at those two losers because they've never won jack shit here, and Jordan's only won two tag team titles because you were carrying a dumbass. And Charlie goes, yeah, well, maybe hanging around with a champion like me makes champions, okay? And with this in my hand, I can make myself champion whenever I want, unlike you, who've got to scratch and claw like the little girl that you are to prove that you belong at the top, but you don't. You never will, either of you. And then she steps up and she's like, well, then we'll fight Aaliyah and Skylar tonight. And Charlotte goes, fine. Then we'll see who the real next tag team champions are. We then cut backstage. John Morrison, he's like putting his gear on, you know, doing some parkour, some yoga and shit. Preparing for the RC title match night when Ali walks in. And he goes, sup, man? He goes, yeah. He goes, are you sure you really want to do this? Like... This bit, this, you don't even know who you're facing, you know. Omas could have been the, the guy, but Bivens didn't. He, he seems to have other plans for this guy. And you don't know who you're facing, you know. That seems like a pretty dangerous action, you think. And Morrison's like, you know, it's just like, you know, you wishing out an open challenge and me answering and accepting and winning the championship. And he goes, touche, touche. Anyway, it's, again, I'll stay back here, but cheer you on, just. You know, just want to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into because you don't, you have no idea who's coming out. It could be, it could be me for all you know. And Morrison goes, "I hope it is," and I'll see you out there. So more just respectful discussion between these two. Ali, like, hey, buddy, like, you don't even know who the fuck this guy is you're fighting. So, <laughs> but Morrison, he's going ahead, defending the IC title against this man. We then come back to the ring when Joe Gacy and the Schism are there. And he goes, Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honour and great, great pride that I must inform you all that the plan for peace and world domination is a go. Now, over the last few weeks, you've seen myself and my 
affiliate saving the schism spread our wings in one case quite literally to spread the message and that message is going to be spread because Lyra is really really getting to the heart of Nova Nebula I can feel it I can feel it in my soul and that's why at New Year's Revolution Lyra is going to go one on one with Nova Nebula and when Lyra wins that match Nova will have no choice but to join our cause and then with players like that on our side and our ranks continuing to grow the great evil and the great world of peace will soon take over not only Raw but the entire WWE Titus one records interrupt Billy Cage goes What's this? What's this you're doing there, mate? Leaving this stupid fever on our fucking on our tape deck? You gotta be joking me, mate! I'm gonna kick your ass right now! You're not even gonna make it to Nova Nova and New Year's Evolution, are you, mate? Now come on! <laughs> and there we get Lyra and Billy Kay in action. A seventy, really? Okay, so I think this is the first time I've actually had Billy wrestle since he's been back. Apparently, she's got excellent chemistry with Tyus as her manager, and Lyra and Billy Kay had excellent chemistry wrestling each other so a lot of boosts made this match you know pretty actually good for what it is but yes it is obviously lyra she's the one with the pay-per-view match and billy is in a comedy stable so obviously lyra wins in seven minutes and five with the guillotine um yeah 67 for lyra 63 for billy k might miss fucking go kathy's then back again and her guests this time are the entire grand jury. And Ziggler, like, he walks out, he puts his arm around her. He's like, what you want, babes? What's up? She goes, okay, so I just want to take, you know, yeah, a recap. Let's reassess grand jury 2023. What's happening? And he goes, well, here's the, here's the scoop, babes. I know you want the scoops. I know people love the scoops these days. Old DZ, he's been put down for so goddamn long. And people have been stepping all over him. Did you know that next year... Marks the 10 years since I won the World Heavyweight Championship. People seem to have forgotten that because people seem to have forgotten me and what I'm capable of. Well, forget no more, Cavi Kelly, because 2023 is not just the year of DZ, it's the year of the Grand Jury. And that starts at the Royal Rumble when I go all the way, eliminate 29 other men and go punch my ticket to become WWE Champion at Wrestlemania. And as for the girls, you know, there's been a lot of talk recently about damage control and J-Flow and even Cheetah and Liv. But these girls here, they are the true next in line for the Women's Tag Team Championship. And there's not a damn thing anyone can do about any of it. Okay, Kathy, that's the show, babes. Keep watching. Stay tuned. 2023, it's our year. We then get a um, Legado promo. Um, it's back at, if you remember, a couple of, like a month or two months ago or whatever, when there was an entire group. Um, they went, Selena went to like meet some shady guy in like a restaurant place. Well, she's back with him. He obviously still can't see his face. And she goes, I know we, we appear to have lost our cause, but. It looks like we're weaker because we've traded off some dead wood. But trust me, we're stronger than ever. Those other guys were just carrying us, holding us back. And now, just me and Andrade and Cruz and Joaquin, this is the streamlined true Legado de la Sombra. And complete domination of Raw will come. But first, we've got pests we need to put down at New Year's Revolution. When. Andrade, Cruz, and Joaquin defeat Death from Above. And then the other guy's like, I look forward to your success and don't make yourself regret getting rid of Medellin and Dorado and Cynthia because they're youthful assets. And Legado must spread the Lucha message for all of WWE. We then cut back to Titus World Records. 
It's like, dog, I don't know what we're gonna do with that 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 Joe Gizzle guy. You know, he's kinda kinda not all there in the head dog, I don't know if you noticed that. And Tosh goes, Yeah, you, you don't say. Well, what are we gonna do about him, dog? Even they've even got a giant to handle Shankster here. And he's like, if they want to recruit allies, if we've got to stop them, I guess we also have to recruit allies. Who are you thinking, mate? Tosh goes, I know just who can help. Follow me. 82. Okay. <laughs> Skylar and Aaliyah show up and show out, apparently. But it's not enough because Shida and Liv do pick up the win when Shida pins Skylar with the Majo no Ichigeki. 77 for Shida, she carries the match. 73 for Liv, 71 for Aaliyah, and a 68 for Skylar. Aaliyah in, a, in the 70s, you know, that's she's come a long way. Um, it is, I say this a lot, but it is nice to see people grow. And like I remember like two years ago, these two had like a zero pop on the score in like 20s. So it is nice to see them grow. But they've sort of become just a fixture of the tag division because... No, like I said, no, it took JFlow two years to win their first belts. So maybe next year, maybe 2023 is going to be the year of the Platinum Princesses. We never know. Stranger things have happened, you know. Part of the Dragon and the Raw Tag Team Champions, they beat Raid RKO. So, who knows? <laughs> Damage control. You. <Yeah. laughs> we got the power. We got the rage. Yeah. Control the stage. Control the cage. Out come Bailey and Dakota and Cora. And she goes, Girls, 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 don't not to rain on your parade, you know. You did so good. Good job. I'm proud of you, hon. Liv, you've come so far. Sheeta, you know, you're you're so new here, but you made a statement elsewhere, and 2023 can be a big year for both of you, but I just thought, you know, we'd pop up, you know, show off both my belts, you know, Bailey Dosh Strap, you know, that's what they call me, because I've got two, one, two belts, count on one, two, in case you missed high voltage, okay, yeah, there's, there's two championships. I had zero this time last week, but I now have two because I'm the best. Anyway, um, but now... With the power of these women's tag team championships and Cora's Liberty Championship, we can float across whatever show we want. And here we are. Damage Control coming a Raw. How about that? And we've heard a lot about the women over here who seem to think that they're next in line. You two, they got them grand jury girls. I don't care who it is. In fact, next week, why don't we kick off the new year in style? You two against... Julia and Sonia, and the winning team will beat at New Year's Revolution. So yeah, just to get the, because just to basically say, oh yeah, they can float now because they've got all the belts, and yeah, big tag match up for next week: Shida and Liv against Julia and Sky um, Sonia, with the winning teams going on to New Year's Revolution to face Damage Control for the women's tag titles. Should be a hoot. We then cut to the anime boys, and they're just straight training and shit. Manny and Dio are still inspecting this big mysterious weapon that that person sent them. And Manny goes, "Are you sure it didn't say a name?" And Manny went, "Positive. Didn't say his name at all anywhere." And Manny goes, "Well, do you know what this means, Dio? Right? We have a mystery stalker." And he's like, "Who? Who do you think it could be?" Who, who do you think's really into us? Manny goes, you know, probably Saray herself, you know, I, I've been feeling a connection between me and her recently. So, and then she sort of walks in and goes, what are you saying? Ah, oh, we're just talking about, you know, this big weapon and how we don't know who gave it to us. We've clearly got some sort of secret ally. And then in walk Titus World Records. And he goes, we finally found you. And Sensei goes, how can we help? And he goes, you, you're still training to to fight the schism, correct? And Sensei's like, yeah, yes, of course. We're not going to start till we get Saray her pendant back. Like, yeah, we're training. And then Titus just smiles. He goes, excellent. Consider Titus world records. Your allies, do you need any more help? And Sensei goes, great, we could use more. More fodder. And Titus like, excuse me, we could use more what? And Manny goes, what they meant to say was, we're glad to have you on board. <laughs> so, the dream team 
is forming before your very eyes with the anime boys and Titus World Records. I guess this effectively also means Snoop Dogg is in, in this, which, you know, makes me happy because that's going to make me giggle. But Snoop's not here this week because, again, I'm not booking Snoop Dogg every week, but it's fine. We then see um, the same woman from last week who asked Santa if he'd got a letter or whatever. And she's walking through, like, it's not in the building, it's like a, a recorded video. And we, like, it just starts, like, we see her heels walking and then we pan up to see her face. Like that sort of angle. Or, or actually, no, it probably just, probably just shows her feet walking to start with. And then when she gets, like, a counter, like a reception, she then pans up and shows her face. And they go, can we help you? They go, yeah, I'm here to, to see, you know, 64. I go, oh, 64, yes. Nobody's seen him in a, quite a while. Okay, can you state your name? And she goes, you know who I am, look. Come on, let me see him. And then he looks down and goes, oh, right, that is you. Okay, yeah, right this way, ma'am. And she goes, brilliant. Time to see what's happening in here. Wrestling has more than one royal family. Cody <laughs> makes his big entrance for his match with goddamn Carland. After last week, Carland, you know, Karrion Cross said he was going to make a man out of Carland. It's time to find out if Carland is a man or not. <laughs> 68. <laughs> He's not. Because Cody beats him in 4 minutes, 35 for Crossroads. 86 for Cody, 35 for Carland. Yeah. Don't know what else you expected. Adrenaline in my soul. Cody Rhodes of a dub over Carland. <laughs> we then cut to backstage. Actually, you know I know this isn't cut to backstage. This is Cody wins, and we cut to ads, and then the Carrion Cross got a storming angrily through the hallway, and Kathy's like, Carrion, guys, what happened out there? And he goes, Listen here, kid. I'll tell you what happened out there. This goddamn kid, this loser here, let us down. He's embarrassing the cult. Well, no more. Kathy, let me ask you something. You got a New Year's resolution? She's like, I mean, yeah, I mean, just, yeah. She goes, good, I've got one too. And she goes, great, it's nice to have goals, isn't it? And he just sort of growls, he goes, aren't you going to ask me what it is? She's like, okay, Carrion Cross, what's your New Year's resolution for 2023? More carnage to erase the stink that some people who are pulling their weight have given to this cult. And that starts next week, the very first week of 2023. Cody, me and you one-on-one, on, one, on my turf, in my match, a cold steel cage. Nothing personal, kid. So, <laughs> for, for fuck's sake, um, think Ambrose Asylum, you know, steel cage with weapons on the top. That's a cold steel cage. Obviously with a K. Cold steel cage spelled K-O-L-D-S-T-E-L-K-A-G-E. <laughs> Cody and Karen Cross in that next week. Morrison. He comes out. He makes his entrance, and I imagine it's like, he makes his entrance, and then it'd be cold to get that graphic where it says Morrison versus whoever up next. And then we cut back and Morrison's in the ring. He's doing more stretches as he awaits for the arrival of his mystery opponent. Out comes a very different looking Angelo Dawkins. And he's got a lot on his mind, but the main thing on his mind is gold. He promised all those months ago that he was going to be the Incarnate Champion. And he's, I guess, used leverage to 
make sure Bivens gets him this opportunity here tonight. And an 80 rated match. We have a new Intercontinental Champion. His name. Angelo Dawkins. He beat John Morrison with the Spine Buster in 1333. And yeah. What a bizarre sentence. Angelo Dawkins. WWE Intercontinental Champion. He gets a 67. Morrison gets an 84. Um, yeah. More Dawkins is well known. So it's fine. But we're going to use this to. Make him a mid carder because he's finally done it. Angelo Dawkins and his Titus O'Neil remixed theme because, you know, that theme is too good to just not use anymore. And it's, it's not being used by Titus because he's still using making moves and or a Titus World Records theme song, which will probably end up being on, you know, the mixtape I have to actually release. <laughs> so, yeah, just give it to Angelo. Fits him. Um. I'm not sure if he's going to be a full-time member of the Bivens crew. I think he'll be like an associate of the Bivens crew, but it's not It's not like, oh, just one and done, he paid him, and then he's gonna, they're going to fuck off. Like, they will still be like loosely aligned. They're not like the Revolution and Zeph, for example, because I feel like I've done that too much recently. But he's not He's not as in with Bivens as like Veer and Omar are. But he is a champion. And now... Next week, we have a banger show in store for you, including Cold Steel Cage, Cody Rhodes and Karrion Cross, the first floor of 2023. Kick that will actually kick off the show. Cody Rhodes and Karrion Cross, Cold Steel Cage. We then also have, as we heard from Bailey earlier on tonight, Hikaru Shida and Liv Morgan. Against Julia and Sonny Deville of the Grand Jury, the winning team goes on to New Year's Revolution to face Bailey and Dakota Kai for the Women's Tag Team Championships. And also, before the big six-man tag team match at New Year's Revolution, we're going to get just a singles tag team match. 2v2, Grandma Alik and Lince Dorado of Death From Above taking on Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wild of Legado de la Sombra. Well, that's the first Raw of 2023. We do have a stacked first pay-per-view of 2023, that being New Year's Revolution, that Sunday. And, yeah, I've had a lot of match announcements tonight, like, they've all been made official tonight. The first being Drew McIntyre, defending the World Heavyweight Championship against his chosen, well, not chosen, his challenger, Ludwig Kaiser. We then also have Bandido, no, we don't. We have Pistolero. <laughs> um, Grand Metal League, Lince Dorado against Andrade, Cruz del Toro, and Joaquin Wild in a six-man tag team match. And also at the start of the night, Chad Gable revealed that him and Sheamus will have a match at New Year's Revolution. This time it's not Master Gable's open challenge. It's just a regular wrestling match, you know. No time limit, you know, just first pinfall wins. And also, Nova Nebula and Lyra Valkyria go one-on-one. -on -one. And if Nova Nebula is defeated by Lyra, she will join the schism. Big stipulation on the line for that one. For a... Well, it's turning out to be quite a stacked show. 78 rated main event. <laughs> because uh, Gable and Ludwig have no chemistry. And because I had to keep Drew McIntyre strong. Well, I didn't have to. But I opted to. Because the final scene of Raw in 2022, in 1748, Ludwig and Gable win this tag team match. And Ludwig, our friend here, the collector, pins the World Heavyweight Champion 1-2-3 to close out the night and to close out the year here on Raw. 83 for Sheamus and 93 for McIntyre, and then because of the chemistry, 66 for Gable and 69 for Ludwig. Which is a sort of meh way to end the year but <laughs> summarize my whole year to be honest as chemistry fucking over my main event so whatever 88 rated show overall though that's really good how did it get that good <laughs> taking paxley and being ripley were as good as that main event by the way <laughs> um yeah but that is the end of raw for 2022 but it's not the end of this episode because we have the final episode of heat 2022 i'll see you on the other side the final heat of the year 
opens up, we have Brandy in the ring with, you know, the final four. You got Kathy Cole, Nene Yarizawa, Samantha Riggs, and Tracy Sharrow. Um, I think Samantha and Tracy were the two that topped their groups. But the matches are Samantha Riggs and Nene and Kathy and Tracy. Obviously, with the two semi finals taking place tonight, with the finals of the next gen cup taking place on the first heat of 2023. And of course, we all know the winner of the next gen cup gets not only a contract with heat. So, like, not on Raw or SmackDown, they'll be, like, on the WWE main roster as a member of the Heat brand. And a spot in the Women's Royal Rumble match. And the first semi-final is, I believe, Kathy and Tracy. Which gets a 33. That's good, considering they apparently got dinged for lack of interest. But it is Tracy Sharrow who punches her ticket to the final. She beats Kathy Cole with an Olympian cutter in 7.42. 45 for Tracy, 37 for Kathy. So yeah, right winner here based on the ratings. But she'll go on to face the winner of the next match, which is Samantha Riggs against Nene Arazawa. And I definitely thought I'd click next segment. And a less good match, but again, the right winner. That son of a bitch, or daughter of a bitch, just bitch, <laughs> Samantha Riggs, cheats again. To beat Nene, who's also a bit of a bitch, but, you know, not as much as Samantha, so boo. To earn the final, Tracy Sharrow, Cupid's Arrow, as they call her, against your boyfriend's crush, Samantha Riggs. With the winner of that match, getting a spot in the Women's Royal Rumble and a WWE Heat contract. But then, we then cut backstage to our newest member of the announce team, Alicia Sanford. And... She is to heat what Funaki is to Velocity, you know, the heat backstage interviewer. She's got Kathy on Raw, Alicia Sanford on Heat, Funaki on Velocity, and Kayla on SmackDown. And she's with Double Trouble, who I might end up renaming if you've got a better name for like a heel combo of these two. Then do feel free to pitch it, but Double Trouble seems like too facey, if you feel me. And Anne Marie does the talking, I imagine she's like. What what has really grounded my gears is that there's all this talk about who's going to be the next in line for the women's tag team championship, and not not a single person mentioned us. Like, sure, we've got this new change of attitude. We started picking up wins, Alicia, but nobody's even looking at us as the next challengers. Okay, we owe Damage Control a lot, so they owe us this, surely. But if you don't believe us, keep watching. They're going to beat up those you know party going girls up next. And that match gets a 61. <laughs> um, yeah. 63 for Kelsey, 62 for Amory, 68 for Katana, and a 53 for Caden. But it is Kelsey and Amory, double trouble, who pick up the win. Amory pins Caden in 10 minutes and 6. And yeah, maybe they were right to not be overlooked for a tag title match. Now, the main event gets a 69. I imagine this would have been announced throughout the show, but I didn't put it in a segment. Fatal 4-Way, Tegan Knox, Lady Jordan, Mandy Rose, and Naomi. Winner goes on to face Cora Jade for the Liberty Championship at a point in the future to be determined. Probably the first SmackDown of the year since Naomi won, and she's on SmackDown. Because, you know, they're defending a New Year's Revolution, may as well have Cora defend that week as well against the winner of this match. It would have been on Raw if Tegan or Jordan won. It would be on SmackDown if Mandy won. And it is going to be on SmackDown because Naomi won. She pinned Jordan with a split leg moonsault. 76 for Tegan, 69 for Jordan, 72 for Mandy, and a 74 for Naomi. So I guess Naomi versus Cora Jade set for the first SmackDown of 2023 for the Liberty Championship. Which ends the final heat of the year. And yeah... A lot of matches announced across all th- all shows, across Raw, SmackDown, even Heat, next next week. And obviously the pay-per-view as well. But before we get to the new year, we do have SmackDown and Velocity to get through. And that will be the final episode of, 2020- of 2022. Maybe shoot, but definitely in-game. <laughs> See you then.